Uh, good morning, Michael. Uh, thank you for being here uh, for us to have this really interesting conversation. Uh, I think we are, are really interested about what you have to tell us. Uh, and I, I would like to start uh, linking our conversation with the conversation Pia had yesterday with uh, Holly. Um, they were discussing about uh, how uh, there was this uh, translation from European countries in the micro simulation models to developing countries. And I would like to, to ask you, how was this process uh, with uh, South Africa? How was the, the, the idea of creating the SAMOD and, and how was the, the, uh, the discussions uh, who are involved? Uh, how was the relation with the government uh, to collect data, etc.? Sure. Okay. Yes, and I was at the uh, session with Holly, so um, I can continue to make uh, connections. Um, I think SA mod specifically really arose um, out of um, the uh, commission that was set up by the uh, African National Congress, the, 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 the new South African government, um, the post-democratic South African government, um, uh, to review social security. Um, and uh, it was chaired by um, a woman called Vivian Taylor um, and contained um, various experts in social security from within South Africa. Um, but they were also looking for international experts and as I'm um, half South African, or at least I have a dual nationality, South African and 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 and, and English, and and had been working in South Africa, albeit briefly at that point. Um, uh, Vivian approached me to be um, one of a panel of international experts, um, and um, so so that involved discussing the future of social security basically in the country to move away from a deracial a racialized social security system under the apartheid government to a deracialized system um and i recognize that i was you know like not um the only uh, international expert that could come from the uk so i brought in um uh, a, a number of other people including tony atkinson and john hills and um, I, I was at Oxford at the time, Oxford University, and um, I actually brought the Taylor Commission to the UK and we had many discussions there and continued those discussions and deliberations in South Africa. And when the um, Taylor Commission wound down, um, the National Department of Social Development, which is responsible for social security, was charged with taking forward the recommendations and developing a research agenda um, in order to uh, work out the best way of uh, moving social security in the country forward um, and the then head of social security um, was a person called Fazile Makawani um, approached us at Oxford and we started a dialogue with Fazile and later with the the, the DG, um, uh, Bussi Madon Saylor, um, in developing a whole program of work um, looking at social security, poverty and inequality in the country. Um, and that program of work, um, we uh, set about getting funding for from the British government, from DFID, Southern Africa, actually. Um, and by 2003, I guess, we'd had negotiated um, a, a partnership between the National Department of Social Development, ourselves at Oxford, and um, uh, co colleagues from the University of KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa, um, a seven-year multi-million pound pr programme. So it had many, many projects in it. But one of the projects that seemed like a no-brainer to us was to um, have some kind of tax benefit micro simulation model 
on the agenda. And there were many, many projects, as you can imagine, over a seven year multi million pound programme that we were, uh, we at Oxford were responsible for, even. Um, and the micro simulation uh, um, project was kind of um, not one of the earlier projects. It, it, I think it actually kicked in, I'm thinking of the timeline, 2006, I guess, really, because uh, the, the actual uh, program of work was signed off in October 2003. And then about three years in, we started to uh, look at um, uh, the, the tax benefit micro simulation modeling. And kind of we thought, um, briefly in terms of constructing our own hardwired model um, either using some programming language or other or stata or something like that um, but you know i'd got a history look, going back and knowing holly and being in touch with um with uh, uh, um well polymod first of all um, which was predecessor to euromod when holly was at cambridge and then holly and i um had a, a, a longer, so to speak, fireside chat about micro simulation when we were uh, both of us examining a, a doctoral thesis in 1998. So, um, so I, I got kind of like the um, quite into micro simulation was in my uh, thoughts at, at that time, um, although I had been dabbling earlier myself in it. But, but so anyway, I I did approach Holly, and I'm sure it was not by a fire side, but almost certainly over a cup of coffee somewhere, because we we bumped into each other quite frequently in terms of uh, 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 other meetings and so forth. And so I sounded out, her out as to what she thought would be the possibility of taking Euromod beyond the, uh, the, the, the countries in Europe, because it never the software had never been used outside of, of Europe. And she thought, well, let's give it a go. So so basically in partnership with by this time holly had gone had moved to essex um and um i think holly and colleagues at essex and ourselves then set about constructing sa mod um and it, it i suppose it took just uh, thinking of the timeline i suppose it 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 took um a year more than almost a, a, a couple of years really um, to, 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 to get it all together because there were big challenges on the data side and there are also big challenges on um, uh, the uh, modeling stuff side as far as we were concerned because we were not we were novices not not of course for for holly and team um, but but the data particularly was an issue um, we thought that south africa would be quite a good country anyway as a developing country to start with because because of its apartheid history it had got a well-developed civil service it had got a well-developed um, um, statistics bureau in the form of um, statistics south africa um, and relatively well funded compared to other countries in sub-saharan africa um, but even so though the data were really quite high quality, they didn't ask the kinds of questions that you needed necessarily for a tax benefit micro simulation model. So we had to kind of cobble together a data set um, initially, which involved um, the income and expenditure survey, but also the labor force survey. And um, we had to do kind of things like propensity score matching and so forth to get a, 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 a single data set. So it took longer and as holly said yesterday data prep is all really uh, the quality of the data the model is only as good as the data that underpins it so we did a lot of work on the data and it went through a, an iteration of 1.0 and then i think we managed to get to the point where 1.1 um which we felt happy with was launched um in uh january 2008 in south africa um, and um, we we had a, a a kind of seminar with you know key academics and 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 so forth. But Holly and I also, because Holly came to South Africa for this, Holly and I went to Parliament and presented it um, to um, what's called the Social Cluster 
of directors general. Um, and director generals are the kind of head honchos of each department. They're political um, appointees, but they are um, the head of each. They're not ministers, but they're the head head of each um, department. The social cluster covers not just social development, which is social security, but also health, education. Uh, someone from the office of the presidency that's responsible for social sector someone from the treasury responsible from so for social sector etc um and that uh went well fortunately <laughs> so he got quite a lot of buy-in um from the south african government at an early stage and because this was all a partnership with the south african government this whole program which it was called actually SACED, which is um strengthening analytical capacity for evidence-based decision making so it's quite a well-known program within south africa and 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 it actually was signed off by the treasury national treasury so everyone knew about SACED and was watching for for good outputs but um yeah so so we got buy-in really from the social cluster which is a big deal uh, um because it does mean that it had got credibility at an early stage i guess and then um and an enormous support from within the department, particularly by this time, the Director General, Vosim Alan Saylor, just supported it. Zola Squier, the Minister um, for Social Development, um, who, who was a, a far thinking and very, very um, uh, eminent member of the ANC, um, supported it wholeheartedly. So we got kind of high level support and buy in. And um, by 2013-14, I guess, we'd got to the point where we um, had, um, uh, were looking elsewhere, really. So um, we were actually approached by UNICEF uh, Namibia to produce a model for Namibia, which was um, became NAMOT. Again, uh, we did it with Essex. Um, and Whereas South Africa, uh, uh, Namibia's um, infrastructure is much less good than South Africa. So it, it felt like a different kind of challenge. Um, and then I think we were talking about um, uh, moving beyond Namibia to the Southern African development uh, uh, community, which is, I think, 15, 17 countries um, um, across Southern Africa. We'd already ticked off South Africa and Namibia. So Essex and ourselves, Holly and Holly and ourselves basically were talking then about, and she referred to this, about seeking funding to 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 produce a SADEC mod, so to speak. Um yeah, and 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 in fact then along came you any wider. So Yuka um approached uh, uh Holly and and the rest is history. But you did also ask me how I got involved in all of this. And in yeah, yeah. Microsoft. And that's, I hope, might be an interesting story for people. In that, um, as I've always been interested in computers and computer software because um, my first degree was, was, was in science, biology, actually. Um, but then after that, I became a lawyer. And towards the end of my um, stint as a lawyer um, in the late 70s, basically, I became a welfare rights lawyer and um, uh, became a welfare rights lawyer that was then kind of affiliated to a community project. Sorry, to, I was a welfare rights lawyer, lawyer in a community project with, which was affiliated to the University of Oxford. Um, and, and I was actually employed by Oxford. Um, and as part of that, um, I started uh, with a colleague um, um, in, in, in a sociologist at, at Oxford, developing um, a, a benefit calculator for individual claimants so that you could, a, a computer program um, at the time in 1981, 82, 83 time when computers were um, not very popular and there weren't many <laughs> home computers around. Um, it wasn't a, a mainframe, um, but 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 we developed a model that would calculate at an individual level um, benefit. So it kind of is like, if you if you will, the um, the po benefit policies in a in a in a Euro mod South mod um, uh, uh, um, regime. So it's an arithmetic calculator basically. 
um, and 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 then go, leading from that, we set up at the university a welfare uh, what do we call it? I think welfare benefits research group, um, and we were particularly concerned that there was some massive social security reforms happening in the UK, um, uh, which were to be implemented in 1988. So uh, we were concerned to to, to uh, been a lot of um, press about how people would uh, lose as a result of these reforms, uh, claimants. So we set about um, um, trying to model who would be gainers and who would be losers in certain aspects of that system using um, administrative data. So my very first micro simulation was not a micro simulation that used survey data, but was one that used administrative data. So what we were able to do with uh, initially with a couple of local authorities, Oxford City Council and Oldham Borough Council, Oldham is in the, in, in, in the uh, 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 Midlands, uh, uh, Oxford is in, in the technically in the southeast, um, and we managed to get extracts um, in in nineteen eighty seven eight time of the whole of their um, computerized housing benefits and council tax benefits um, systems, and we got them on big mag tapes and carried them to the computing center, and they were anonymized records, but they were individual records which had information on people's uh, earnings, other sources of income, etc., and um, rent, mortgage, whatever, um, and um, enabled us to model, first of all, changes in housing benefit, but also changes, uh, uh, eligibility for other benefits, such as uh, family credit, which was a, uh, an in-work benefit. So we, we, we used the entire databases um, and, and constructed a model in, in a, a, a statistical analysis package called PSTAT. PSTAT probably still exists, but it stands for Princeton Statistical, St statistical Package or whatever. But PSTAT was the, um, what our um, computing service called the Thinking Persons SPSS, but SPSS <laughs> I don't think peace that it. <laughs> so there clearly weren't many buyers for that uh, particular uh, slogan. Uh, anyway, we did it in peace that, and we did it on terminal. We didn't do it with screens like we do things uh -huh. now. We had a teletype terminal where you had to type in the commands, and it printed out, uh, and you had to write your whole program. Um, <laughs> without being able to see it on the screen. I tell you, modelling like that at Hollywood have uh, told a similar story. The, the, this mainframe modelling is not fun. But we were able, because because we could only do it on a mainframe, um, PCs weren't capable of handling, you know, tens of thousands of records, is what, which is what we were looking at in those days. You know, they didn't, they had like, you know, not even a megabyte of RAM. They used to have, you know, like, 250 k 56k of ram was a big computer you certainly couldn't process these administrative data sets then so it had to be done in that way so that was really how i got really thinking about um micro simulation back in the 80s but not really branding it as micro simulation if you, if you see what i mean so yeah, yeah um so i think that's really the whole story yeah this is really interesting i think is uh completely different from how most of the people end up in, in micro simulation models. <laughs> uh, and also the history about uh, how some model was created uh, because I did my homework before the, this session. And uh, when you search for some mod, you find uh, documents from 2007, but it seems that the discussion started uh, many years before. So uh, it's really interesting to uh, listen from you about it. So uh, while my while our audience uh, is formulating the questions, I would like to ask you another question. Uh, can you tell us, us a little bit about the relation between the activities developed in the SAMOD uh, with the real practice? I mean, what I mean is uh, 
how the activities the Samoa development uh, become policies or which policies were requested to be simulated and in fact were uh, implemented or the discussion went uh, ahead. Mm. Okay, yeah, well, there were quite a lot of, it's very hard to actually point to a particular simulation and say, now that actually became policy because it, didn't quite, it hasn't quite worked out like that. Um, but it's also true that probably most of the simulations that we've undertaken with SA mod have been in a context that's been a request from government as part of a research project that's been either separately commissioned by uh, the South African government, one part or other of it, or um, has been commissioned uh, uh, um, indirectly um, through a research program that the government departments had or whatever. So. We've 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 done that kind of thing, and I can talk about some of those simulations. It's also been used in a much more routine way, which is um, to estimate uh, budgets um, and even forecast. So um, so regularly, the South African Social Security uh, Agency (SASA), who's responsible for paying out grants, needs to know how much money they're going to need to pay out, you know, in, in years to come. So actually the basic model, um, we, we, we use it and reweight the output um, regularly for SASA to give projections. Um, and um, so it's kind of used in that routine way and for um, in-house explorations, et cetera. Um, but um, there have been a whole range of, of, of specific um, uh, requests from from government, um, starting really with um, uh, uh, um, sort of one off specific benefits that didn't exist um, type requests, just I think testing the water like a youth benefit, because um, it was the, the social security system that that, uh, that that was around in the in, in the early um, 2000s after Taylor Commission um, had a big hole in it, which is basically that um, children were pro progressively covered, um, um, older people were covered um, from 60 onwards, people with a disability were covered, but non-disabled people from uh, 18 to uh, 59 weren't covered at all. So there's some explorations, early explorations, as to kind of unemployment grants for, 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 for such people. Um, we, we also, at the beginning, um, even Child Support Grant, which is the child grant, didn't go right up to 18. So one of our early simulations, which is kind of fairly directly relevant to a policy change, was actually modelling I think uh, we got involved uh, um, when they were wanting to extend it. Um, it started off by being just payable up to age six and then it got seven or seven, something like that. And it got extended in, in to 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 uh, not to fifteen year olds, and then sixteen and seventeen year olds were the last group. And that by that time we got our model, so we were actually asked before that 16 and 17 year old um, extension to child support grant we were asked to model that and subsequently on child support grant we've done work for dsd um, modeling um, converting it from a means tested grant to a universal grant and how to fund it through the tax system um, for the national treasury and department of social development we've been involved in um, uh, modeling um, a universal old age grant because it's again the current one still means tested um, and um, yeah um, and we do uh, grants and so forth and but but most recently I think um, uh, we've been involved in 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 um, work with for DSD looking at the social, social uh, relief of distress COVID grant and also uh, the possibility of a basic income grant because the whole thing about the pandemic even though way back in 
2000, the Taylor Commission recommended a basic income grant for South Africa. And Zola Square was always incredibly in, in supportive of that. We could never, he, um, with our support, would never get it through um, Parliament. So, but it's now actually on the agenda um, and we're doing work currently on, on with the South African government on that. Yeah. Uh, really interesting. Uh, yeah, I think I, I would like uh, to hear about it because uh, one of the critics that we receive from being academics is that uh, we are not related to the policy making. And I think it is uh, the work on, in, the, in the micro simulation uh, is really related to the policy making and mm. to uh, this reward. So uh, we still have some, we have still have two, three minutes and I will uh, ask a question Pia wrote in the chat. Um, basically what Pia is saying is that um, you have a big motivation uh, of working with young scholars and government officials. So she basically asked about how this relation uh, of engaging with young scholars change with time in some way. How does engagement with young scholars happen? Um, and, well, and change over time. Sorry, I didn't. And also, and also change over time. So how this happened and how change with, uh, with time. Well, initially the model was very much an in-house model really for um, the Department of Social Development. It really didn't involve um, uh, more open access. Um, we, 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 however, didn't negotiate with the Department of Social Development that it, we needed to um, get it out there more. And providing it was used by um, uh, educational institutions for or, or not-for-profit institutions, then uh, I think we were all, because uh, it was kind of a, a jointly owned model, Essex ourselves and and uh, Department of Social Development were really happy for it to all go out there. Um, and um, and so we've had in our various, we, as, as a non-academic institution, we haven't had direct scholars ourselves, but we've, you know, kind of intersected with other universities, particularly in South Africa, who've had access to the model and supported them indirectly rather than directly. Um, but we've always, the, the one thing we have always insisted, though, is um, that people have some kind of training in Euromod or specifically essay mod before they can uh, uh, run away and um, play with the model simply because we don't want it to you know force claims to be made on the basis of people who are in, inadequately trained okay uh thank you very much michael i think uh this was a very interesting talk uh, i'm really glad glad that this is this was recorded so people will be able to watch this later um yeah so thank you very much thank you everyone